Hi, I'm Minda Tracy from My Online Training Hub. I'll be taking you through how to use Excel to build this interactive project management dashboard that you see behind me. At the top, the dashboard header gives a high level overview of task progress and budget. Conditional formatting gives a visual indication of the progress of each task over time, and it's color coded to reflect tasks not started, in progress, and completed. The slices at the top allow us to filter tasks for specific projects and managers. And as we make selections in the slices, you'll notice the headline charts also update. Now the scroll bar up here allows us to scroll horizontally through the dates. We can move one day at a time or clicking in the middle of the scroll bar will jump a week at a time. Before we get started, I just want to set your expectations for this tutorial. First of all, it's going to be at a fast pace. You won't have time to follow along step by step the first time you watch it. There's a link in the video description where you can download the workbook and data. And of course, you can rewatch the video as many times as you like, pausing and rewinding as required. Now I'll be using Office 365 and one of the new dynamic array functions, but there are alternate formulas available for earlier versions of Excel. So what you see here can be done in all versions of Excel from 2010 onward. Okay, let's get started building the dashboard from scratch. Here I have a new file. Sheet one is where I'll build the dashboard. Now I want to make it clear that this is just a regular Excel worksheet. I've put some formatting and text in the header just to save me some time. But otherwise, it's just a regular sheet. You don't need an add-in or anything fancy to build this dashboard. So now you know that, I'm going to rename this sheet Dashboard. Now my project data is on the data sheet. And you'll notice that it's formatted in a tabular layout with one column for each field and a single row for each task. Now I want to point out the formula in column F, so let's just view the formula bar. This calculates the end date and it uses the workday.international function and that allows me to ignore weekends. And if we look at the syntax, we can see that it takes the start date, which is the project start date. Then I've taken one day off because we want to include from the beginning of the start date in the project duration, as opposed to from the end of the start date. And then it adds a number of days, which is the duration of the project. And then the last document we've got here is for the weekend. Now this is a number based on a list. So let's just bring up this list. So you can see number one specifies that my weekend days are Saturday and Sunday, but you can choose from different combinations and even just have one day off. Obviously, if your project runs seven days a week, then you don't need to use Workday International. You can just take the start date plus the duration. I need one for Saturday and Sunday. Now the last argument of Workday International is to account for holidays. So if you have holidays that you want to factor in that won't be worked on, then you can refer to a list. I'm going to leave it simple and just ignore weekends for this example. So that's how my end date is calculated. Now the first thing we want to do is ensure the source data is formatted in an Excel table because this will help me build the dashboard quickly but also means that updating can be done with the click of a single button. And the keyboard shortcut to format data in a table is Control T. Brings up the Create Table dialog box and my table has headers is checked, which applies here, so I'm going to click OK. You can see it's now formatted in a table. It's got the color scheme and the header row has the filter buttons. We also have this contextual table design tab and you can see my table name is called table one. I'm going to leave it at that, but it is a good idea to give your tables a proper name. That's going to make it easy to reference when you build your dashboard. So I'm now ready to insert my pivot table and we can do this directly from the table design tab, summarize with pivot table. So let's go ahead and do that. This pivot table is going to be the main pivot table on my dashboard. So I'm going to choose an existing worksheet, which is my dashboard. I'm going to pop it in there and click OK. Now the first thing I want to do is right click the pivot table and format the options to turn off auto fit column widths on update. I've already set my column width, so I don't want the pivot table messing with that as I build it. Now I'm just going to zoom out. Let's put it at 85%. It's just going to give you a bit more view of the overall dashboard. 
strictly speaking when building dashboards always build them at 100% and make your charts and fonts smaller rather than zooming in and out. It's just going to render those fonts and charts more clearly whereas when you use the zoom the images can become distorted. Okay so this pivot table has all of the fields. So on the project, the task, the manager. I want the start date and then the end date. Now I'm just going to drag this field list out so we've got a bit more room. I also want the days completed and the duration, but because these are numeric fields, it will want to put them in the values area. So I'm going to drag them down into the row labels just to make sure they go where I want. And likewise, the progress, that's also a numeric field. The budget and the actual can go into the values area. Now I'll just dock the field list again. Let's format this pivot table. I want it to be in a tabular format. So on the design tab, we're going to go report layout, show in tabular form, and we'll turn off all of the subtotals. I also don't want any of these expand and collapse buttons. So on the analyze tab, I'm going to turn the buttons off. Now the pivot table has automatically grouped my dates. So I'm going to right click and ungroup. That's the start date and this is the end date. And now we have the data without any grouping of my dates. You can see the actual individual tasks. I've got a bit more formatting to do. I don't want these labels to say sum of budget and sum of actual. So I'm just going to type over them. Now I can't use budget because it's already in the field list. So I'm going to trick it and just add a space to the end. And we'll do the same for actual. Let's also right align those so that they're aligned the same as the numbers. Speaking of the numbers, let's format them. So I'm going to right click value field settings, number format. Here I want thousand separator and no decimal places. Now I recommend you always format your pivot table value fields using the value field settings number format rather than the number formatting on the home tab, because that way the number formatting will remain with that field. It won't matter what cells those fields are in, it will always have the number formatting. Whereas if you use the number formatting up here and your pivot table changes shape or grows, the number formatting may not remain with the field. So always use the value field settings. All right, next I want this pivot table to look a bit more in keeping with my theme, which is going to be greys. So let's set the style to this gray color. We'll also, remove the grid lines so that our dashboard looks a bit cleaner. Okay, let's take a look at the dashboard to see what's next. We've got these charts up here, so let's go ahead and we'll start creating the analysis for those charts. So on my workings tab, I've got some labels here ready to go. What I want to do here is count the number of tasks that haven't started, are in progress, and are completed. So we can use count if for this not started. Now I could reference the data, but because my dashboard will be at times filtered based on the slicer selections, I want my count to reflect the data in the pivot table. So I'm going to count the progress of the pivot table tasks and we'll just extend down to row 50 to allow for some growth. Obviously you can extend your count if further than that if you think you're going to have more growth. So the criteria is where the progress equals zero, the project hasn't started. So close parentheses. So there are four projects that haven't started. Let's count those that are in progress. Now this time I need count ifs because I need multiple criteria. Again, we're referencing the progress field of the pivot table and we're going to extend it past the end to allow for growth. So the first criteria is where the count is not equal to zero because obviously we want to count projects that are in progress and again we'll reference the progress is less than one if it's one then the project must be finished it's 100 percent so this is our projects that are in progress where the count is not zero and less than one Lastly, we want to count how many projects are completed. So this is again, just a simple count if there's only one criteria and that is where the progress is 100%. So we're at equals one. 
So now we have our breakdown between not started, in progress and completed. We can see there are 37 projects remaining. That is the not started plus the in progress and 40 tasks in total, the completed plus the remaining. Now we want to insert a bar chart for these not started, in progress and completed. So on the insert tab, I'm going to go into recommended charts and then all charts. This way I can choose bar. I want the stacked bar. This is the default, but this is the one I actually want. And this is the only place I can choose it. So I'll click OK. And now I'll just do a little bit of formatting for this chart. Let's go ahead and we'll turn off the axes. We're going to use labels instead. We don't need grid lines. And let's put the legend at the top. Next, I want to control one to open the format pane. And actually I want to format the bar itself. So we'll go into the series options. Here I want the gap width to be zero. But now I want to change the size. You'll see that it just enables the bar to fill up the space of the chart rather than having lots of white space. So I want it 3.73 by nine. And we'll left align the legend and the chart title. Let's give it a title. Now I'm going to paste this chart into my dashboard. So I'm going to control X to cut it. And then let's go back up and we'll paste it in. Control V to paste. Now I need to format it because I don't want the fill in there. So on the format pane, we're going to change the shape fill to no fill and the shape outline to no outline. Let's make this font white so that it stands out on the gray background. All right, let's take a look at what the next chart is. We want this donut chart here that calculates the percentage of days completed versus the days remaining. So we'll go ahead and create that. On the workings tab, I'm going to insert a new pivot table here. We'll use the data again. Let's insert the pivot table. We're going to pop it on the workings tab just here and I'll click OK. So this one looks at the sum of the days completed versus the sum of the total duration. And I want my values in the row labels. Now I need to reference this pivot table because I can't insert a donut chart purely from this because it will sum these figures and that's not what I want. So let's just create some labels, days completed and days remaining. And it's simply a case of referencing the pivot table. You'll notice it puts in the get pivot data function. So we want to find the percentage days completed are of the total duration. And then we'll just calculate the balance, which is 100% minus the days completed. Let's format them in percentage and we'll insert a donut chart. Now, if you know me, you know, I'm not a big fan of donut charts, but everyone seems to love them. So I'm going to go with the flow in this particular example. So let's go ahead and format it. We don't want a chart title. The legend is actually going to be the title. So we'll put it at the top and let's resize it because it's enormous and it's not really conveying a lot of information. So we're going to make it 3.73 by 3.25. Now we have to faff about with the donut. So I'm going to control one to open the formatting pane. And I want to make the whole size 60%. And I need to add a label that shows the percentage of the days completed. Now I could use data labels, but in my experience, they don't stay put when you only want one. And I want it to remain in the center of the donut hole. So with the chart selected, I'm going to insert a text box. I'm just going to draw it over the top and then select the outside of the text box in the formula bar, type equals. Click the cell containing the day's completed percentage and press enter. So now I can format it a little bit. We'll change the font color to this more subtle gray and we can make the font a bit bigger. Let's just make that box bigger so that we can see the whole percentage. So now I've completed that chart. Let's format it with no fill and no outline or we'll control X and we'll paste it in here. Now I need to format this with a white font. And I need to move it up slightly so that it sits correctly over the gray area. And then of course, all the fiddling happens because the sizes don't remain the way that you want. And we'll make the donut a little bigger as well. Okay, so there's my first painful donut chart. 
what's next. Let's take a look. What I haven't done is format my overall task progress bar to show the different fill colors. And in fact, my whole dashboard is not using this color scheme. So let's spend a few minutes doing that. Up on the page layout tab in the colors, I've got a custom color scheme for project management. So I'll select that and it automatically updates everything. So I haven't had to do a lot of work, but I'm still going to have to customize these colors. So control one to open the format data series on the paint bucket. I want this not started category to have no fill and I want the border to be a solid pink outline. Now it's quite a thin line, so I'm going to increase it to 1.5. This one here is correct already, but now that I've put a border around the not started, it doesn't look so good. So let's add a border to this as well in the same color, but we'll give it 1.5 as well. And we'll do the same for this one. This one's going to have a solid fill in this green color, but it also needs a border and it needs to be 1.5. That way they're all the same size along the length of the bar. I'm going to go ahead and give this font a white color just so it stands out a bit better on the pink. We can do the same for this green and we'll leave the four as is otherwise you won't be able to read it. Now I'm just going to bring this down a little bit. Okay those two charts are looking pretty good. Let's take a look at what's next. So we need to create some pivot tables to calculate the percentage of budget that's spent and to show us the total budget versus the actual. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, from the data tab, I'm going to insert a pivot table on the working sheet. Now, if you know me, you'll know I recommend that you always put pivot tables on their own sheet just so they don't overlap each other accidentally when you're building and updating your dashboards. I'm cheating a little here, so bear with me, but you really should abide by that rule and only put one pivot table per sheet. All right, here I need to know what the actual is and the budget. Now I want to format these fields to millions. So I'm gonna right click value field settings, number format. And here I want a custom number format. So I want 0, 0.0 and then to round to millions, you put in two commas and I obviously need to classify it as millions. So let's type in M for millions after the backslash. That's the positive value, semicolon. The negative value will be the same, except it has a minus sign. And we'll leave it at that and click OK and OK again. Now I need to do the same for the budget. Let's go in, but now that I've created the custom number format, we'll find it at the very end and I can just simply select it from the list and click OK. So now we have the actual and the budget. I need to change these labels and add a space to the end. Now this is going to be for my bar chart. So I might just add a column in here and let's give it a label bar chart. And I need to also create a donut chart for the percentage. So it's going to calculate the percentage of actual over the budget. And then the balance is one minus the actual percentage. So we'll format these as a percentage sign. All right, I'll insert the donut chart first. Now this one has got a title, but no legend. And we'll change the size so that it fits on our dashboard. It's 3.73 by 3.25. Again, we need to change the donut hole size to 60% and we'll give the chart a title, budget spent. And obviously the font's a bit big, so let's make it a bit smaller and we'll make it white while we're here. Next, with the chart selected, I'm going to insert a text box to house the percentage. So draw that on, select the outside of the text box in the formula bar equals and then the percentage. Let's format this a little bit, make it a bit bigger and we'll give it a lighter gray. All right. Now I'm going to cut this out and then we'll make the donut bigger size. So control X to cut, control V to paste it in. Oh, I forgot to take out the fill and the shape outline. 
All right, so I'll move this label up a little bit and now we can make the donut a bit bigger. So I'm just left clicking and dragging the pull handles. Okay, that's maybe a bit big. Let's do it a little smaller. All right, we want it to sort of stay in keeping with the size of this one. So they're roughly the same size. I won't waste too much time because you get the idea and you can make those changes yourself. The next chart I need is the bar chart that looks at the budget and actual. So back on the workings, this one is a pivot chart. So with the pivot table selected, I can go onto the pivot table tab and insert pivot chart. I want a bar chart and I'll click OK. All right, first thing I want to do is right click and hide all the fill buttons. Then we're going to get rid of the axes. We'll give the chart a title. I want data labels, no grid lines and no legend because I'm going to select my data labels and then we'll go in and we'll format them so that they show the series name. And let me just get rid of that so you can see. So I've added the series name. I'll get rid of leader lines just in case. And I want the series name and the value on their own line. So I'm going to select new line. We need to rinse and repeat for the actual. Okay. Now I need to separate these bars a little. So my series overlap is going to be minus 30. And my gap width is going to be zero. It makes it look enormous. So let's resize the chart. Remember it's 3.73 high and this one is six wide. We'll fix the chart title. I'll bring it over to the left. So we'll get rid of the fill and the outline and control X and I'll paste it into the dashboard. We need to change that font color to white. I can bring it over a bit. So there are our headline charts completed. What we want to do now is insert some interactivity in the form of slices. So with my pivot table selected on the pivot table analyze tab, I can insert slicer or you can do it via the insert tab. I want slices for the projects and the managers. So there's my two slices. Let's bring them up here. We'll give them five columns and let me resize them. I'll bring this one up beside. Let's just align them to the top. Okay, so they're my slices, but right now they're only connected to this pivot table. I need to also connect them to this one and this one. So all I need to do is right click the slicer, go into report connections and select the other pivot tables from the list. We'll do the same for this one. Now when I select a project, you can see that it feeds through to the other charts as well. Likewise, if I select managers, you can see they're all updating. Now, something I want to do is format the number style for this bar chart. So control one, what I want to do is if the number is zero, I don't want to show it. So I'm going to create a custom number format. In fact, I've already got one there that I've used before. So I want one digit for the positive minus the digit for the negative and the zero format is left blank, which means it will be hidden. So I'll apply that and I need to do it one at a time. And we'll choose the same one for each of the labels. Okay, so now if I choose a manager that doesn't have, for example, in this case, lad hasn't got any completed projects, you're not seeing a zero for the label on the completed segment of the bar. All right. Now I can actually move these over a little bit. We can see them all in one screen, only just. Okay, the next thing I want to do is give my user a little bit of information about the date range that my dashboard is currently looking at. So I'm going to clear all the slices so that my dashboard is showing all of the data. And then we're going to insert a text function here that finds the minimum date from the start date and I'm going to extend it down to allow for growth. Now the text function wants to know how that date should be formatted so I'll just type in my date format. It doesn't have to be in capitals it's just I've got a caps lock on. So we'll do day, month, year and then I want to join the start date to some text that says to with a space either side and then we're going to find 
the end date. So we're going to convert it to text and find the maximum of the end date. Again, allowing for growth. Formatted the same, so day, month, year. If you're in the US, then obviously you'll change that formatting to month, day, year. And when I press enter, we get the date range. And if I select a different project, you can see that the formula up here adjusts accordingly. Let's just take a look at what's next in the dashboard. You can see here we're missing all of the information about the task progress. And we need to add in these conditional formatting bars. So we're up to the conditional formatting stage. But remember, when I click on the scroll bar, the dates here adjust. So I need to insert the scroll bar. So let's go ahead and do that. Now on the developer tab, you'll find insert and then form controls. And this is the scroll bar. If you don't have the developer tab, right click any of the tabs, go customize ribbon, and you can check the box for developer. And then you'll have the developer tab and be able to insert a scroll bar. You can see my mouse has changed to the cross and I can just left click and drag to draw it in. Now I need to assign this scroll bar to an output cell. So I'm going to right click, format the control. Here I can specify the current value. I'm going to put in one just so you can see what happens when you link it to a cell. The minimum value will be zero, that's fine. The maximum value, I'm going to go with 30, that's 30 days. Incremental change one day at a time when you click the ends of the scroll bar and page change will be seven, one week when you click inside the scroll bar. And I'm going to link it to a cell on my working sheet. So I'll click OK. Now if we take a look at that cell, you can see the cell link is returning one. So let's give this a label so we know what this field represents. If I go back to the dashboard, and deselect the scroll bar. Now when I click on it, it moves accordingly. And if we look at the workings, now it's at position zero. The next thing I need to do is insert a list of dates in this row. Now I'm going to use the sequence function for this. This is a new function available in Office 365. If you don't have Office 365, then there are alternatives and I do cover those in my Excel dashboard course. So I want to automatically create a sequence of dates. I only want them in one row. So the first argument is one. How many columns of dates? Well, I'm going to grow out 26 columns. That's nearly four weeks. That will do. The start. Well, what's the earliest date? I need to use the min function to find the earliest date in my list here and allowing for growth. But remember, we've got this scroll bar in here, so we want to take account of the scroll position. So I'm going to add the scroll bar position. And then the next argument is simply the step. So here, I want the step just to be one day at a time. So I'll close parentheses, and you can see it's added in the dates. They're not all formatted correctly. So let me go ahead and do that. We use a custom number format day, day, month, 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 and click OK. All right, let's also format them so they're all centered in that row. So they're my dates. Now, if you keep an eye on them, as I click in the scroll bar, the dates are updating. That's because it's adding the value from the scroll bar. All right, we're ready to do the conditional formatting. So first, let me add some data bars to the progress. And that will just give us a nice visual indicator of the progress rather than having to read the percentages. So conditional formatting, data bars, and we'll just do this one with solid fill. Now I don't particularly like the color, so I'm going to go in and manage the rule, double click to open the editing dialog, where I can select this color, which is in keeping with my theme. And we'll click OK. So that's quick and easy. And as this changes, these data bars will automatically adjust. Now I need to continue this formatting across my column. In fact, I haven't centered those, so let's do that as well. And we'll use conditional formatting to do that. That way, if this grows, then the conditional formatting will adjust as well, rather than hard keying the formatting if you like. So we'll go conditional formatting, new rule. Here I need to use a formula to determine which cells to format. And the formula is really simple. 
I just want to check whether this cell here, and I need to change the absolute reference so that it's only fixed on the row and not the column, is not equal to blank. So I'll give it this gray fill. And I just want to distinguish each day's column area. So we're just going to use white and we'll give it a border, a vertical border, and that will just give it a more defined look. The other thing we need to do is put in a freeze pane. So on the view tab, I'm just going to freeze row five. And that way, when we scroll down, all of the data in our header remains in place. We're ready to apply the conditional formatting for our tasks. So the first thing I want to do is select all the cells that I want the formatting applied to. And we'll go out to column AJ. I've allowed for growth going down to row 50, but obviously you can allow for more growth if you need. So here again, home tab, conditional formatting, new rule. It's a formula based rule. So here I want to, let me move this across here, highlight which days in this calendar are weekend dates. So we're going to use the weekday function for this, but I need multiple criteria. So I need the and function and then weekday. So weekday returns the day number based on a calendar that you specify, similar to the workday international function. So I need to select the first date and then just absolute the row. And the calendar that I want to use is the second calendar that specifies my weekends are Saturday and Sunday. So all I need to do is test that the weekday number is greater than five. When you specify two as the weekday type, it numbers Monday as one through to Sunday as seven. So Saturday is six and Sunday is seven. Therefore, any days greater than five are the weekend dates. The other criteria I want to check is that I actually have a task on this row because as we scroll down, rows 47 through 50 have no tasks, but I don't want the weekend format to flow through to those days unless there's actually a task. So I'm going to absolute just the column and check that it's not blank. So we'll close the and and let's go ahead and format them with a pattern that just hashes out those dates. I'll click OK and you can see my weekend days are now formatted. The next formatting is for the completed days. So again, conditional formatting, new rule based on a formula. Again, equals and. So here I want to test which days have tasks that are in progress and color them with a green fill. So we need to check whether the date, and I just want to absolute the row, is greater than or equal to the start date. And I want to absolute just the column. And I need to check that this date is greater than or equal to the current days completed. So we're going to use Workday International, like I did to calculate the end date of the project, taking the start date, absolute the column, plus the days completed, absolute the column, using the date type one, which specifies Saturday and Sundays as my weekends, minus one because we need to include the start date in our range and if I don't minus one from this calculation it will calculate from the start date not inclusive of it. So we'll check that it's greater than or equal to the current date, absolute just the row. Close parentheses on my and. Now I can go ahead and apply the format. So I want this green fill color and I'm going to apply a white border top and bottom just to give a bit more definition to the fill and I'll click OK. So now we have our completed days. Notice that it's sitting behind the weekend dates. That's OK. We're going to fix that in a little while. The next conditional format we need to apply is for the in progress. So let me just select all the cells again. And I'll scroll back up to the top. All right, conditional formatting, new rule based on a formula. Again, you'll notice that they also use a similar formula. So we need multiple criteria again. I need and, and I'm checking whether the date in the first cell, absolute just the row, is greater than or equal to work day international, taking 
the start date, absolute the column, plus the days completed, absolute the column, based on type one, and that the progress, absolute the column, is not equal to one, because it's not complete, it's in progress, and the date, absolute the row, is less than or equal to the end date, absolute the column. Now I'm just using F4 to absolute those fields. Close my parentheses and let's go ahead and format it. Again, we'll use a white top and bottom border and the fill color this time is pink. So click OK and OK again. So we've got our completed in green, our in progress in pink, and we need these not started fields conditionally formatted next. So new rule using formula equals and. So we need to check that the date, absolute the row, is greater than or equal to workday international, taking the start date, absolute the column, plus the days completed, absolute the column, based on type one, and progress, absolute the column, is equal to zero, we're looking for projects that aren't started, and the current date, absolute the row, is less than or equal to the end date, absolute column. Close parentheses, and then we just format it, no fill, but we want the pink border. Click OK and OK again. Now we can't see it, and that's because the order of our conditional formatting isn't correct. So I'm going to go into the conditional formatting and manage the rules. So here I need to bring the weekend rule to the top, and click stop of true. And when we do this, you'll notice that these green bars go away. So I'll click apply. Now I need to also set this one as stop as true. And that way it will be applied before this fill color. And now you can see the formatting for the not started is applied. And then this one is never evaluated because it stops if it's true. So I'll click OK. And that's our conditional formatting almost done. One thing I'd like to do is con continue on this grey fill across the grand total row. But because that grand total row can change depending on which project you have selected, I need to use conditional formatting for that as well. So again, I'm going to go down and select the fields that I want formatted. And then conditional formatting, new rule, based on a formula. Here I want to check whether this row, this cell here, absolute the column only, contains the text grand total. And here I want to apply the formatting. This is going to have this gray fill and we'll give it a top border. I think it's this darker gray here. So I'll click OK and OK again. And you can see now it's formatted with the gray fill. And if I change my filter, you can see that that formatting moves with the bottom of the pivot table. One thing I forgot to do was just abbreviate this label so that it fits in more easily. Of course, with dashboards like this, the data is being updated all the time. And by formatting the source data in an Excel table, you're making that job super easy. For example, let's say I have some new tasks to add to Project Vega. We can see at the moment there's only five tasks. All I need to do is add that data to the bottom of my table, or I can insert new rows. I've got some data copied to my clipboard, so I'm just going to Control V to paste it in. You can see the formula has copied down, likewise for the progress. Now if I go back to the dashboard, all I need to do is go to the Data tab and click on the Refresh All button. And you'll see not only will the pivot table update, but so will all of these charts. So click Refresh All. And now my two new tasks have been added. And this also applies to any changes you make to existing task progress. So you can see updating your dashboards when you build them with Excel tables and pivot tables is super fast. Now I know I ran through that quite quickly, but remember you can download the file at the link in the video description. You'll find it contains step-by-step -step instructions with screenshots, as well as more resources, including links to tutorials on the functions and conditional formatting used to build this dashboard. And as a bonus, you'll find some tips on dashboard protection. Now, if you like this video, please give it the thumbs up. 
and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to be notified when I post my next video. And please share it with your friends and co-workers. Thanks for watching.